On this episode, I make these parts for the traction engagement system. This will include cutting square holes and cutting left hand threads. Welcome to the Phil Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. Today I'm going to be making a couple of different parts. The first of these is the spring pistons. These will require a combination of lathe work and work on the mill. I get started over at the lathe with a piece of 20mm free cutting steel round bar. This is being held in an ER32 collet chip. I start by turning the piston shaft down to diameter. Once it's down to size, I finish it with a lathe file and emery cloth. From here, I move on to drilling and tapping the part with the engagement screw. I start with the centre drill. I keep this in a small fixed holder for convenience. Next I switch to a drill to suit the tap size. The next step is to cut the thread. To keep the tap straight, I use a spring tapping guide, which I hold in the drill chuck. I'm making two of these spring pistons today. One will be tapped standard M4, and the other with a left hand M4 thread. This is what will make the pistons extend and retract. To cut the left hand thread, I use a left hand tap. This works exactly the same as the right hand one, it just took a bit of getting my head around is it's second nature to turn the tap as in a right hand direction. Once the thread's cut, it's time to part off. I do this at a slow speed with the carriage locked and plenty of cutting oil. Then it's time to head over to the mill. I'm going to be holding the part today in an ER32 collet block. These come in square and hex versions, depending on whether you're cutting a square or a hex. I'm using a 14mm roughing end mill to make my cut, and once that cut's made, I flip the collet block over for the next side. This is repeated until I've got four sides cut. Today I'm cutting a rectangular head, so I adjust the height of the cutter for the second two sides. Once I have all four sides cut, I remove the part from the collet block. The next task is to cut a keyway. For this, the part is located in the mill vise, gripped on the square sides, and the part is located using an edge finder. The keyway is cut using a 3mm end mill. Very shallow cuts are made at about 0.3mm at a time. This is repeated until I get down to 1.5mm deep. This will suit a standard 3mm key. Once the keyway is cut to depth, I take the part over to the bench and clean it up using a file. With that done, I head back to the mill. This time to cut a square hole through the head. For this, I'm using a 4mm end mill to remove a bulk of the material, cutting the rectangular shape 
and shallow parts. This is repeated until I come out the other side. At this point it's probably worth mentioning what the purpose of the square hole is. It's going to hold a series of leaf springs, which will then press on the horizontal axle boxes. This will press the traction wheels against the centre rail. Once the hole's right through to the other side, I remove the part from the vise and file it square. This part is then complete. Next I'll tackle the engagement screw, which is made out of 4mm stainless steel rod. I grip this in the collet chuck on the lathe to aid with cutting the thread square. I use the tailstock to keep the die square and apply pressure as I start the cut. This shaft will have a left hand thread on one end and a standard thread on the other end. I'm cutting the left hand thread here, so you might notice I'm cutting backwards. It took a bit of looking around to find a left hand die, as they're not that common, but for a thread this size, it's the easiest way to do it. If it had been a larger diameter, I could have looked at single point cutting it with the lathe, but there's too much deflection on a small diameter rod. The last task today is to turn a face on a small gear. I could have made these gears but given the size of them, I decided to purchase them. I decided to customise these with a decorative face. This face matches a gear, which is visible on the original locomotive. I've quickly put this together so you can see how it works. Basically we've got a left hand screw on one side and a right hand screw on the other. So when the gear is turned, the pistons extend and retract. The keyway will prevent rotation. In the next episode, I'll make up the remaining parts so we can see how this actually works once it's fully assembled. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Catch you next time!